Alrighty, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a kind of different kind of reaction video where I'm not really reacting or reviewing in more of my traditional way. There's not really any reason to review what I'm about to, to watch because I'm not really going to be critiquing anything. Um, this is a video from a a voice actor that I admire named Joe Vija. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He has done tons of anime. He's done Star Fox. He's done a whole bunch of stuff. And this was a video that's kind of old, but it's one that I remember watching a long time ago when I was kind of getting into taking voice acting a little bit more seriously. But I strangely don't remember how many voids and empty spaces there were apparently in the information he was going to share. And that's not really, again, that's, that's not any uh, critique, uh, but it is something that I had noticed and was brought to my attention. I, I noticed after, or remembered after it was brought to my attention by someone who uh, again, emailed me wanting to know about more about anime voice acting. Now, though I have done a good number of auditions for anime as of current, I haven't done any actual projects. I haven't actually dubbed anything yet as far as like officially dubbed anything for anime. So obviously, uh, Joe here, his advice and expertise is on a different level than mine. He has a better understanding of the industry having actually done it, you know, at least as, as of the making of this video. Hopefully, years down the line, if you're still watching this, maybe that'll change. Hopefully. Thumbs crossed. Thumbs crossed? But I wanted to actually review it in the sense of asking the questions and possibly filling some of the, the empty space in the video because there are some areas where it does seem a bit vague. And one of the things that I think frustrates new voice actors the most is not actually knowing the questions they want to ask and not being able to find answers based on those questions they don't know to ask, if that makes sense. So hopefully... And again, he is more experienced than me, and so I'm not going to be reviewing or reacting him in any kind of critical way. I admire the man and, you know, love him tremendously. Uh, but I do ho hope to kind of help add to the conversation. So that's what we're going to be doing, hopefully. So let's get into it. Anime. Look, it's weird. We're fans of anime. We know it's weird. You don't have to keep telling us. And if you want to get into anime voice acting, stay tuned, and we'll get weird together. Wait, was that weird? I don't know what he's trying to say. It's a little weird, because I don't know what he's trying to say here. I think, Because I think it, people that would say that it's weird wouldn't actually be trying to get into anime. But I don't, actually don't think anime is that weird. I think it's actually getting pretty mainstream, at least as of current. I don't know. I don't know if it's that weird. It's a bit loud. It's a bit, bit of a loud intro. Very crunchy, too. This is just water, by the way. Lots of water. For Drink more water. great tips on how to be a voice actor, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button on this page and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post a new video in this series every single week. Hey, guys. Go it's ahead and do Joe Zija, former Air Force officer turned voice actor and author in the Los Angeles area. Thank you for your service. First off, right out of the gate. I've lent my voice to thousands of projects, and I've been Is that a, a yoga mat on his chair. As well, you might have heard me as Fox McCloud in Star Fox Zero: The Battle Begins. Yep. Omokage in the Hunter Hunter movie, or uh, Achilles in Fate Apocrypha: The Rider of Red. Were those roles ridiculously fun to play? Hell yes, they. I were. imagine they were. Can you do it too? Hell yes, you can. In this video, we're going to talk about Hopefully. three things you can do to break into the anime dubbing business. <coughs> dubbing, which is the word I'll use to describe overlaying English on Japanese audio, 
The process itself also known is as ADR. technically complicated. It's a skill that you have to learn that is entirely separate from voice acting in general because it requires timing, it requires you to listen and speak at the same time sometimes, and the way yeah. it's formatted, you need to break up an entire paragraph of a speech for a character and record it line by line. To Which is actually, for me, a whole lot easier. Uh, what he's talking about is... Um, so when you see like a a line on a on a script it's like a paragraph but dubbing it sometimes you're actually cutting it into segments based on what you're seeing on screen to kind of match it a little bit better a little bit more specifically just to make sure that you're not you're not uh putting wrong emphasis or or kind of stumbling over syllables or, or if the, there's a particular emotion that needs to be on a particular word, making sure you're hitting that at the right time. And make sure that that timing is exact. You, as the actor, need to match the lip flaps of the character on screen. It is recorded in time to the Japanese audio. Japanese is very I'll probably be from pausing this every now and then the just to make sure up. that but if the I'm not just playing his entire video. In the middle of a sentence, you need to pause too. Sometimes that can make for some very unnatural phrasing. Your director and your writer are going to help you with it, but you as the actor are going to have to take this problem and solve it to make it look very natural on the screen. There's not so really much to add here because everything that he's saying is well said skill. and well you can see that there's posted. A lot of plates. Also, I have no problem talking over his video and pausing it because if you guys want to watch the video uninterrupted, <laughs> go to his channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the description. The link to the video and his channel is in the description, as always. The balance here, right? If you're already in Los Angeles or in the uh, in uh, near Dallas, I recommend that you get some training first, and I'll post some links to that in the description below. All right, let's start a fight. Dubs or subs? Post it in the comments. No holes barred. Tell me why you like them, but don't make me regret asking you. Be nice and get out. <laughs> confusing series of statements um dubs i prefer dubs uh mostly just because i don't want to just be staring at the bottom of the screen when the artist put a lot of time when the artists put a lot of time and love into every square inch of what i'm looking at and i would rather be captivated by the emotions while listening to the character as you would if you were sitting across from someone Rather than looking down, it's all, it, it feels like looking down at my phone while I'm sitting across someone who's talking to me. And that always feels unnatural. So I, I prefer the dub, generally speaking, but there are some animes where the dub is really not all that good. And I will absolutely agree on that. So I think it's a case-by-case -case basis. Tip number two, know the medium. Now, you're probably not watching this video if you're not interested in anime to begin with, but if you are not like I said earlier. familiar with anime, its format, its style, get out there and watch them. Sign up for Crunchyroll, which is an Be anime careful, though. service that you can download on pretty much anything like a PlayStation, Xbox. Or know what you're getting into. Find a friend who knows anime and knows you very well and then ask them, where should I start? Don't just go into any anime. Not every anime is e created equal, and not every anime has the same audience in mind. Though it may look cartoony and in, and look as if it's intended for children, it's, it's generally speaking not. Anime can be for all ages. It's a little bit different than it would be here. Most studios and most people here, in at least in the States, consider cartoon to be mostly intended for young people or children. That's not necessarily how it is everywhere else. So that's how I'm going to word that. That's how I'm going to phrase that. View with caution. Your smart TV or your computer. Learn what an Start etchy watching is. Some anime and watch different types of anime because there's a whole lot of it out there. There is teen drama. There is stuff that is really dark and to the point where it just makes you uncomfortable. It runs the gamut, just like any other entertainment medium. It can be all kinds of different things. Watch. Yeah, again, not like really adding too much. Hey, I want you to go watch cartoons, but no, go wa go watch anime. Uh, oh, and don't call them cartoons.
When you're watching them, I want you to watch in both the original Japanese with subtitles and watch dubs of people that have already done them. Japanese has its own very unique style. Yeah. Um, and it fits. It was the, the, the anime was drawn and written to kind of fit that style. So it's really good to see it in its original natural Japanese form. Watch the animations closely. See how it affects the character's sound so that when you're dubbing, you can watch the image. Yeah, I got nothing to add oh, here. Yeah, his hair's on fire. I'm going <laughs> to. This is well documented. This is well, well put. Tip three. Nailing the audition. Now, here I'll we go. Honest, I think some of the hardest part of anime voice acting is getting the opportunity. So if you've already yes. made some relationships, you've got some training, and you've got a piece of audition copy in front of you, congratulations. That's not something that everybody can say. So good on you for getting this far. When you get a piece of audition copy for an anime, it's important to see the... Okay, I think now we're slipping into the area of some really vague statements. And I'm hoping that he clarifies later on, but we're four minutes into the six minute video so maybe not so he said make connections make friends and get the copy in front of you that is from from what i've heard from people especially the one that emailed me um that's probably the the roughest and most vague statement that needs the most clarity uh it's not necessarily obvious to everyone who doesn't do it or isn't natural naturally good at it when it comes to networking social networking making connections it's not clear and it's not blatantly obvious what exactly those are and what exactly you do to get there especially in western society western civilization where things are getting where everyone is getting more and more antisocial where people are getting more and more disconnected from each other so people that are younger than my generation i mean even even in my generation making connections was taking a huge nosedive especially when it came to face to face anyone who's younger than my generation probably lacks a lot of that um i mean even if you go to public school it it can be incredibly daunting and incredibly hard and incredibly tricky to know exactly what it is you need to do to make those connections. Where do you go? Is it, you know, is it a particular venue? Do you email them? Do you call them? How do you set up that initial contact? Now, from what I've learned, the easiest two ways to go about doing that Maybe three. Easiest three ways. One is conventions. Going to conventions. Comic conventions, anime conventions, especially anime conventions. There's a lot of these voice actors that you will get to see or get to meet there. Now, do not stalk them and do not absorb the entirety of their time. But if you do get the opportunity to have a friendly conversation with them, have a friendly conversation with them. Don't have the friendly conversation with them with the idea of, I hope they like me, I want work. Don't do that. But just try to bond with them on a human level. Be, be organic and natural. Be yourself. Be, be human. And if you can make that kind of connection, you can actually make a friend, they'll probably remember you. The, remember, the, the two main ways that we create memories and store memories, faces, names, stuff like that. One is through a horrifying experience, trauma or extreme negativity. And the other one is extremely positive, some kind of joyful experience. If it's mundane, boring, bland, or awkward, unless it, it slips into one or the other, it's probably going to just fade into vague and blurry memory, if at all. That's why we often forget where we parked. We forget whether or not we locked the door because these are just mundane memories that are neither positive nor negative that just slip out of our mind. So you want to leave an impression in a good way. You want to be well remembered. You don't want to be remembered in the negative light. Uh, that means that they will make sure that if they ever see your name, they will avoid you at all costs. But you do want to make sure that you make that connection in a positive way. And that would include not stalking them, not asking them for work, not, not hounding them. One thing that happens even to me in the emails and messages is how do I get work? How do I get work? How do I get work? How do we get work? 
And though this is a great question that everyone asks, even voice actors who have been doing this a while still ask these questions. How do I get work? How do I get work? I mean, the market is constantly changing. So the best way is to make connections, to make friends. And I do that with clients. I do that with other voice actors. Every now and then, some of my voice actor friends do throw me some auditions. They do throw me some work. You know, I throw them some auditions. I throw them some work just because I know them really well. I know their their work ethic. I know how to contact them. I know what they sound like in my head. I know their personality. I know that they would fit this. That's the kind of stuff that you want to make connections with. So that's conventions. The other one would be going to doing workshops or coaching. Now, again, don't do these don't take on these kinds of uh, workshops with the idea of just getting work, even though that is essentially what they're there for, is to prepare you for work. And don't just go in to try to show off. Actually, let me amend that. More than anything, don't go into coaching or workshop just to show off. You will come off as fake, and you will probably loudly proclaim the things you don't know. And that, again, will, if it's really negative, will put you in the negative memory category. But you want to, if it's a workshop or if it's coaching, you want to show the person that you're working with, especially if it's if it's a leading professional like our uh, boy Joe here, um, you want to show that you can take direction, that you're flexible, that you can listen, that you can do the work, you do have skill. A lot of the times that's a better thing to showcase than your range and variety and how snappy your demo is. A lot of times just showing people that you are patient, that you are okay admitting you don't know something, but are willing to work to get better at it is more valuable than a lot of other things, than your resume a lot of the time. So, so you got conventions, you have coaching, and you have workshops. The other ones would be there are some social media platforms where you can make connections, like Facebook and Twitter, but I personally, this is just my thoughts, I don't find those to be authentic. I don't find those to be real or genuine. I find a lot of people just boasting and being bombastic or lying or being too critical on each other. So I don't find the social media side too healthy. I post stuff on social media, obviously, because I have to market. You have to. You should. But I don't go on there with the sole intent of making connections. Some people do, and some people can make it work. I don't because... I don't really see a lot of those as too much opportunity. Um, So I would definitely stick to the conventions, which I know is hard because of COVID, and the workshops and the coaching. Um, These are probably the best places to make connections, to make friends, to social network. These are probably the best ways. Now, yes, these do cost money on some level, whether it's getting the ticket to go to the convention or whatever it is, the pass, uh, and then also paying for the coaching and stuff like that. But these are things that you should probably be doing anyway. If you're going to a convention, you can also market yourself. You're not just going there to make a connection. You're also going there to market yourself. You can wear T-shirts that has your branding. You can go out and hand, hand out business cards, not to people who don't want it, but to people who do ask or do seem genuinely interested. You can talk to other people and gain some information. So you do benefit from all of these things, even though they do cost money. Those are probably the best ones. And and that's the kind of stuff I kind of wish he would cover a little bit. I would love to see if he agrees and um, disagrees. The show first. Most of the time when you get that copy, the show will already have been in production, which is something that no other medium can say that they have that advantage for. 
um, that show is available probably in the original Japanese, and you can go review it. Do if not pirate anime. Sending you the audition doesn't send you. The there, scene I said that it. They're sending you in the original Japanese. Go look it up. It doesn't need to be the exact scene, but it's a really good idea to go out and check out the specific show that you're auditioning for. Some performances are very grounded. Some performances mm -hmm. are very bombastic. Uh, the well-grounded ones, I really, really love. Um, a well, uh, a perfect example of a well-grounded anime. It's not a show. It's it's a it's a forty-five minute movie. Is a Garden of Words. Elwin's very down to earth. It's played very serious. It's it's done more as acting rather than anime voice acting. It's very and that's both the dub and the sub. That's that's both. So that's a good example of that one. As far as like the bombastic, that would be more like your your uh, your action based anime shows. You know. Kind of As uh, anime director Tony Oliver once told me, anime may be the only medium in which it is okay and even sometimes encouraged to overact. It's also important to remember that it's not your job to mimic the Japanese performance, okay? Yeah. You're, per you're performing for an American and English-speaking audience, so the style isn't going to translate one for one. You that was actually something that I actually went into and I actually kind of didn't truly understand, didn't know is that I I actually kind of sort of thought that it was better to, in some way, at least mimic the pitch and cadence of the subversion. But as I have learned, that it's better to just do a performance that is more comfortable for me, it's more natural for me, as well as would fit the American anime viewing audience or the the English anime viewing audience, rather. You want to encapsulate so I agree, 100. Of the show, not necessarily mimic the voice, mimic the performance, because in it, it may not translate properly. It may not make sense for you to do what the Japanese. It's not really much for me to comment doing. on. So make sure that you put your own unique spin on it. That'll help your audition pop and show the director that you know what you're doing as an actor. <sighs> okay, so. He's not net technically covering this. He's not technically covering how to do an audition, an anime audition, and what kind of stuff they're looking for. Um, I kind of would l like, and maybe, who knows, maybe if we're lucky, he'll do an update or he'll do a response to my video. Um, even if he just tore into me, that'd be fine. I'm just happy to be nominated <laughs> for the for the verbal ass beating, if I do ever get one. Um, uh, I would actually like a breakdown of how to interpret when you would do a more bombastic or over-the-top voice or character for an anime audition than you would a more grounded, down-to-earth one. I've heard from a lot of people, generally speaking, I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be putting on a character voice. I would be doing my own voice. And I would just be doing, you know, I would just be changing my performance to match the character. And generally that's true. I would say that's, that's generally true from what I've seen, from what I've heard. I would say that's pretty accurate. But sometimes there are roles where it would be more exaggerated. There are, there are some characters, there are some roles where it would be more larger than life, where it be, would, be, would, would slide more into the cartoony area. There is a huge difference between American cartoons and English dub anime, generally speaking. But there are some roles that would actually be more cartoony, that would actually be more over the top. And I think because anime is so wide ranged, it is so broad, it is in its spectrum and its variety and the emotions that are being told and the stories that are being told. And having to tailor this for an American audience, I, it would be really, really nice to see a very thorough breakdown on the kind of stuff to keep in mind when doing an audition. Because, for example, I've seen tons of animes that are essentially the same. They're high school dramas, and they kind of have the same kind of leading protagonist. But one show will do the leading protagonist, even if they have the same emotion— one 
wildly different way, and the other one will play him more down to earth, even if essentially the character's performance and body language is the same. And personally, I think both performances would be exactly, you know, uh, would be perfect for the ones they were given. How do you determine something like that? How does a casting director determine something like that? How do you know that that's a good fit before before there has been a dub. When there hasn't been a dub yet, and you're just going off the Japanese, which doesn't translate one for one, as he has just said, how do you interpret the character for an American audience? Now, a lot of this, from what I've been told, comes with experience, but how do you get past that lack of experience? How do you get past that general being at zero? How do you break into it? Which is, the breaking into anime is a lot of the stuff that I really wish was covered in this video and in its talk. That's the kind of stuff that I feel that nobody really gets and understands and nobody's really talking about. And due to the fact that anime is, is a rapidly growing demographic when in the you know, voice acting community, dubbing, there are becoming more, there are more and more studios, there are more opportunities, and there will be more opportunities and more studios and more projects and more shows later down the line. It's getting easier to produce this kind of stuff to a degree. It's getting more affordable on some level, and it's becoming more wildly available. So there are going to be a lot more people getting into anime who have no experience. They'll have tons of experience doing voiceover and video game in cartoon, in just general voiceover across the board, acting experience, but those don't necessarily mean that you'd be good at anime. And those don't necessarily easily translate into a good anime audition. Now, again, I've never landed an audition and I've never gotten any feedback from an audition. Uh, I've gotten to do plenty of auditions, but and one of them was from Funimation, but I've never actually landed any, and I've never gotten any feedback, so I don't know how close I was. I don't know how good the performance was. I don't know if I was on the right track, so I, I can't really help you there because, again, I'm also at experience level zero. When it comes to anything else, I've done it all, pretty much. But when it comes to anime, uh, like, the rest of, like the rest of us who are trying to break into this industry, eh, I don't know. Remember, you are an actor first. With this anime basics video, we're obviously barely scratching the surface for all this stuff, yeah. okay? So this isn't everything you need to know about anime acting. If you have access to Los Angeles and Dallas and some other places in New York City that will train you on this stuff, I highly recommend that you go do it because there's nothing like just getting in the booth and dubbing. You're hearing those three beeps and you go. Getting that timing down is something that you need to practice and it's difficult to do without a medium to practice with. I may do a more advanced, in-depth look into anime in a I hope you video do. Uh, if people are interested in it, and you can let me know that you're interested in it by liking, subscribing. I hope this video also helps you know that there is a huge interest. ...and commenting below. Hey, what's your favorite anime? Post it in the comments below, and we'll have a huge argument about it. I said Garden of Words, uh, Toradora, uh, and uh, Tony Kawa, and... There's a couple others. Uh, weathering with you. Weathering with you. And your name. And these are all my favorites. And, oh, there was another one. It was something... Something Kun's uh, Revenge. Where he's like, he used to be a fat kid. And then he got, he slimmed down. And now he wants revenge on a girl that bullied him. That one made me laugh. I think it's missing a lot of stuff, and there was like some cliches and some some story arcs and some episodes that I didn't like and made me feel uncomfortable and felt like I was miss there was there was a lot of stuff missing, but that one made me laugh. That's a list of the stuff that I like. There we go. All right, everyone, that's a wrap for this week. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Twitter, yep. Facebook, Instagram, where you'll get lots of behind-the-scenes looks into a life of an anime actor in Los Angeles and some hints and tips for voice acting there as well. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe before you leave. Thanks again for stopping by, and I'll see you in the booth. Um, I, I don't know 
how important it is to move to L.A. anymore. Uh, I, I don't know if you have to move to Texas either. I think you, sh- you, sh- you, you should move to one of the major cities. But I, I want to say that de- there's, there's a major city in every single one of every single state that does have opportunity for you. But I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I also don't know how much opportunity for this kind of work there is in New York. But it is getting more widespread. It is getting more recognized. There are more studios that are picking up anime. And there are more platforms that anime is being launched to. So there could be a good deal of opportunity. You just have to look for it. You just have to Google it in advance, and hopefully you can find something. Personally, I say Texas is probably still the better state for anime. Uh, Mostly just because of the cost of living being significantly lower than L.A., Uh, especially if you're starting out. Well, I mean, just in general, if you're starting out in voiceover, you really shouldn't be moving to a major city if you don't have a reliable source of income. You shouldn't be making that kind of commitment. You shouldn't be making that kind of change, that kind of move. But if you had a guaranteed job, you already knew you had a place to live, and it wasn't going to be extremely stressful, and you were going to have the time to time and money to adventure into these kinds of avenues, then by all means, go for it. By all means. But if you don't have any guarantee, don't just go to L.A. and Don't just go to Dallas. Don't just go to Austin if you don't have any kind of, you know, income. That's that's really the, the, the key thing. You have to have you have to have that income. Otherwise, you're not going to make enough money. You're going to be miserable. You're going to be broke, exhausted, and you're not actually going to have the time and resources to actually be able to take the coaching, take the take the classes. So first and foremost, make sure you're financially secure. You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be wealthy. Just make sure that you're financially taken care of before you take on anything like this for any kind of major move. But um, yeah, uh, again, like he said, this was a basics video, but I don't know, and maybe I'm wrong, leave that down in the comment section below, please, if there was a video that did actually cover the topics that I covered, the questions that I had. Because I know this is probably the biggest anime-related voice acting video on YouTube that I could find or that I know of. And as I've shown, there are a lot of questions that not just I, but a lot of people have. Now, I personally have actually already had a lot of these questions answered over the years. There's, there's some of these that I already know the answer to. But if you were like me, you have these questions or had these questions. And it's knowing the right questions to ask that actually helps out a lot. If you know the right questions to ask, you know where to go, who to ask, what to ask, and then you can get the answers and then you can move forward. Until you get there, it's really, really hard. And a lot of people don't know what they don't know until they know that they don't know it. Kind of stumbled on that a little bit, but I hope you get the idea. So anyway, uh, yeah, this was not a critique of him or his video. I just wanted to hopefully add some context, hopefully add to the conversation. And I would love, I would love if he did a follow-up or did a reaction to my video, whatever, or if he even just commented, that'd be totally fine. But I hope that I have helped on some level. If I didn't, leave the video a thumbs down. Totally fine. If I did help, or if you found it helpful in any way, or even entertaining, leave it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, you know what to do. If you don't, I've already said. And uh, until next time, peace.